the video I put up yesterday about Lightroom version 7.3 and how I didn't like what it did to your pictures by default and I showed you how to do a process version swap hmm I've actually found there was a little tiny mistake in there something I actually overlooked a little foible of Lightroom v 7.3 that I didn't notice perhaps because I wasn't concentrating enough and also perhaps because I have a tendency when I'm working in Lightroom to work in solo mode so something happened in the basics panel that I didn't notice and if you want to do a process version swap it's going to be a little error that creeps in with 7.3 that never used to happen with any previous iteration of Lightroom but anyway here we've got a portrait now I'm rubbish at portraits I don't do them and you know I, I don't count myself as being any good at them but this is just a portrait taken under available light it's a bit of a grab shot really and it, it, but you know I mean it's a portrait shot it looks all right the only thing is the raw file looks like that in the new version of Lightroom this image is actually one stop underexposed and it was a deliberate one stop underexposure because I didn't want to run the risk of blowing any of these highlights on uh, I can't remember a name now for the life of me but she got quite shiny skin so we've got to be a little bit careful with what we're doing here when we expose otherwise we're going to start getting blown highlights here on the lips here on the cheek in the eyes and everywhere else so it's been a deliberate one stop underexposure and it was it was taken quite a long time ago on an old D2XS, uh, which wasn't old at the time I took it, but well, there you go. But nonetheless, this picture just looks like a total bag of spanners. But the thing is, the exposure isn't as cocked up as Lightroom version 7.3 leads you to believe. Because if I open the same file in Raw Therapy, yeah, what's wrong with that? Absolutely nothing. It's been brought into raw therapy. It's had a totally neutral profile applied to it. It's had 270 degrees of rotation applied to it. And it's had one stop of positive exposure compensation added to it. And it's just been white balanced because this wall here in the background is a totally neutral grey wall. So all in all, there's nothing wrong with the exposure on this particular raw file. Nothing wrong with it at all. It's got all the detail there, it's got no blown highlights, no block shadows. But of course, if we go and look at it in Lightroom, especially in the new V7.3, it looks like a bag of crap. Of course it does, because the whole rigmarole with these profiles and the hidden background adjustments that Lightroom puts on is an abomination. And I'm fed up with telling people this. And why they can't see it, I don't know. So if we want to produce this image we've got to produce it inside photoshop because of the actual technique that's been used in producing this final image it's a technique known as frequency separation and there is no way on god's earth you can do that inside of lightroom plus the fact that we've got to maintain correct color so we can't go crazy on the saturation otherwise we change the color of our eyes and I don't think either she or a family would be very happy with that, do you? So, we've got to go and put this image into a position of total neutrality where we can send it off to Photoshop, do a little bit of work on it, and produce that. And there is just no way that anybody on the face of this planet can argue with what I've just said. Because to produce this image... We have to do it in Photoshop. We cannot do it in Lightroom. We have to work in channels and we have to work in layers and we have to work in blend modes and none of those things exist inside of Lightroom. Please understand when you want to do decent photographs, you've got to use Photoshop. You can't do it all in Lightroom. Anyway, I am wobbling on and ranting again. So what I need to do is to show you the little error when you do a process version swap. In other words, to turn this 
abomination into something that's relatively neutral so you can then move it into Photoshop and get on and make a half decent image out of it. If we stick with this Adobe profile of color, what we did yesterday was come to camera neutral and click close and straight away you can see we've got separation between the hat and the gray wall and because I've left the shadow clipping indicators on you can now see that we've got a lot less shadow clipping. The next thing we did was come down to the calibration panel and switch it out to version 2 PV 2010 and now we've got a lot of shadow clipping but it's a process version that isn't using shadow and highlight recovery. I think Part of the problem why I didn't notice this little glitch in the system is because I work in solo mode. So I'm going to take it out of solo mode by just clicking on the empty space of one of the panels and unchecking solo mode. And I'm going to open up the basics panel as well. Because if we notice we've got camera neutral. If I now come over and click zeroed as a preset, now it switches the profile back, but not to adobe color it actually switches it back to adobe standard now I, I, I don't quite understand why that is i would have thought if it was going to switch the profile back it would have switched back to the default profile of adobe color which is what sort of leads me to think this might be a little bit of a glitch but on lightroom 7.2 and every other version of Lightroom that came before it, if I came down into what was the camera calibration panel and I set the image profile from Adobe Standard to camera neutral, then did a process version swap and came and it zeroed, it never changed the image profile from whatever I'd set it to. These are the camera neutral. So we have this little glitch here and when i did the video yesterday it did actually change the profile back to adobe standard and i never noticed but anyway we'll come back and switch it back up to version 4 the current process version just to get our sliders back and then we'll come to tr um, not transform we'll go to lens corrections we'll remove chromatic aberration we'll go to details we'll double tap there to put all the color noise corrections back in and then we'll go and double tap the exposure to put the exposure back and then we'll actually just go and add the one stop of overexposure that the image really requires we'll go for a white balance over here on the gray wall and then we'll come and go to browse and we'll go to camera neutral and we'll click close and now we've got a proper process version swap so now we can take this image into photoshop we can do our frequency separation preparation on the image and we can bring it back into lightroom and we can just perhaps titivate it in lightroom with a couple of radial graduated filters and a partial vignette which is what's been done here and there we go so when i made that video yesterday i wasn't saying that lightroom was an absolute abomination blanket per se because it isn't because it's still one of the best digital asset management programs out there and it's got some really good clever little adjustments that you can do to your images but you must realize that there is an awful lot of crap being added to your image when you first bring it into Lightroom and it doesn't matter what you do with these sliders here or the tone curve or anything else you cannot produce this image inside Lightroom it can only be produced inside Photoshop and to produce it in Photoshop you need to neutralize it in Lightroom first so there you go don't argue with me it, you don't you don't have to listen really to a single word that I say because this is all about pictures the pictures tell the story and that picture there which is done inside a Photoshop proves my point you cannot get this from that without 
this intermediate step. So there you go. Little qualification rant over. I'll see you in the next video. Cheerio.